Welcome to a video on using a polynomial to approximate a function. The goal of the video is to determine a Taylor polynomial or Maclaurin polynomial to approximate a function. So polynomial functions, such as the one given here, can be evaluated by using basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. And this is often very beneficial because many functions, like the ones we see here, cannot be evaluated by these basic operations. So sometimes it's helpful to have a polynomial that can be used to approximate other functions. Let's take a look at an animation to see how this will work. Here we have the function f of x equals e to the x, and we have a tangent line at x equals zero. Remember a tangent line is a linear approximation to a function at a given point. So this would be a degree one polynomial approximation to f of x equals e to the x. And watch what happens as we increase the degree of this polynomial approximation. You can see as the degree increases, it becomes a better and better approximation to the actual function in red. Remember a degree n polynomial has n minus one turns, so the more turns a polynomial has, the better it can conform to any given function. Let's take a look at f of x equals cosine x. And again, watch what happens as the degree of the polynomial approximation increases. It becomes a better and better approximation of the original function. Now let's take a look at how we're gonna come up with the formula to create the polynomial approximation. If we take the function f of x equals e to the x and determine the equation of the tangent line at the point zero, one, Here's the equation of a line in point slope form. So if we added y one to the other side, that would be f of zero. f prime of zero would represent the slope, and then x sub one is the x coordinate of the point of tangency. What I want you to notice is at this point here, the two function values agree, and so do the derivatives at x equals zero. Now if we want to find the degree two polynomial approximation, we would have to take the linear approximation and add a quadratic term. In order to find this degree two polynomial approximation, the function values would have to agree, the first derivatives would have to agree, and now so would the second derivatives at x equals zero. So we could solve for a sub two using this condition here if we needed to. And this pattern will continue if we want to find the degree three polynomial approximation we take the degree two polynomial approximation and add a degree three term, and we could determine a sub three by satisfying the equation where the third derivatives were equal to each other. If we keep doing this, a pattern develops, which leads to the formula for a Taylor polynomial. So this states here that if we want the degree n polynomial approximation to a given function, this would be the given formula. What I want you to notice here is that for the degree one part of the polynomial, we need the value of the first derivative wherever the polynomial is centered. Meaning in the last example, we had it centered at x equals zero, but we can center these at any value of x. For the degree two part of the polynomial, we're going to have the value of the second derivative evaluated at c divided by two factorial, and so on, all the way out to the degree n part of the polynomial where we have the nth derivative evaluated at c divided by n factorial. And this is called the nth degree Taylor polynomial for f of x at any given value of c. And if c happens to equal zero, we can call this a Maclaurin polynomial. Let's go and take a look at a couple examples of how this works. So for this problem, we want to determine the fifth degree Taylor polynomial centered at x equals zero for the given function. Well, we could have called this a Maclaurin polynomial since it is centered at x equals zero. Let's go ahead and see if we can write out the formula for the degree five Taylor polynomial. If we want the degree five Taylor polynomial, we will have to go out to the fifth derivative of the given function, and then we'll have to divide by five factorial. So we're gonna have f of zero plus f prime of zero times x minus c, but again, c is zero, so we'll have times x plus the second derivative evaluated at zero divided by two factorial times x minus zero squared or just x squared plus now we'll have the third derivative evaluated at zero divided by three factorial times
times x to the third plus the fourth derivative evaluated at zero divided by four factorial times x to the fourth and then finally plus the fifth derivative evaluated at zero divided by five factorial times x to the fifth. So now let's go ahead and find the first five derivatives and then evaluate them at x equals zero. So f prime of x would equal negative sine x. f double prime of x is going to equal negative cosine x. Let's go ahead and find the third derivative over here. The derivative of negative cosine x would be positive sine x. And the fourth derivative would be equal to cosine x. And the fifth derivative would be equal to negative sine x. Now again, we have to evaluate all of these at x equals zero. So f of zero, the cosine of zero is one f prime of zero, well sine of zero would be zero, so this would be zero. f double prime of zero, this would be negative one. f triple prime of zero would be zero. And the fourth derivative at zero would be one. And the fifth derivative at zero would be zero. This is all the information we need to find the Taylor polynomial approximation. So we'll have t sub five of x is equal to f of zero, which is one, plus f prime of zero times x, well that would be zero times x, plus f double prime of zero divided by two factorial, that would be negative one divided by two factorial times x squared plus, well the third derivative evaluated at zero is equal to zero, so we're gonna have zero times x cubed plus the fourth derivative evaluated at x equals zero was one, so we'll have one divided by four factorial times x to the fourth. And this last term, the fifth derivative evaluated at zero is zero, so we'll have zero times x to the fifth. Let's go ahead and simplify this. The degree five Taylor polynomial or Maclaurin polynomial would be equal to one. And let's rewrite this as minus one half x squared. This would be zero plus, and then four factorial is 24. So we'd have one twenty-fourth x to the fourth. And since the degree five term is zero, this is our Taylor or Maclaurin polynomial. Let's go and take a look at the graph of what we just found. The blue function is the Taylor polynomial and the red function is the original function. And notice the polynomial is a good approximation as long as we're close to x equals zero. Let's go ahead and try one more. Here we want to determine the fourth degree Taylor polynomial centered at x equals one for the given function. So let's go ahead and see if we can write out the formula for our fourth degree Taylor polynomial when x equals one. So we'll have f of one plus f prime of one times x minus one. Notice now the polynomial is centered at x equals one, so c is equal to one. Plus the second derivative evaluated at one divided by two factorial times x minus one to the second plus the third derivative evaluated at one divided by three factorial times x minus one to the third and then lastly, the fourth derivative evaluated at one divided by four factorial times x minus one to the fourth power. So let's go ahead and determine the first four derivatives of the given function. F prime of x would be equal to one over x, which remember is equal to x to the power of negative one. So the second derivative would be equal to negative x to the negative two which would be negative one over x to the second. The third derivative would be the derivative of this, which would be positive two x to the negative three. And the fourth derivative would be negative six x to the negative four, 
which would be negative 6 over x to the fourth. Let's go and see if we can find our Taylor polynomial. f of 1 would be natural log 1, that's 0, plus f prime of 1 would be 1 over 1 or 1 times x minus 1 to the first, plus the second derivative evaluated at 1 divided by 2 factorial. Well, if x is 1, this would be negative 1 divided by 2 factorial times x minus 1 to the second now, plus f triple prime of 1 divided by 3 factorial. Well, f triple prime of 1 would be 2 divided by 1 cubed. That would be 2 divided by 3 factorial times x minus 1 to the third, plus the fourth derivative evaluated x equals 1, and that would be negative 6 divided by 4 factorial times x minus 1 to the fourth power. Let's go ahead and simplify this and then we'll check it graphically. So here we'll just have x minus 1. This would be negative 1 half, so we'll write minus 1 half x minus 1 to the second plus 3 factorial is 6, so 2 6 would be 1 third x minus 1 to the third plus 4 factorial is 24, so 6 over 24 would be 1 fourth. And since it's negative, we'll go ahead and change this to minus 1 fourth x minus 1 to the fourth power. So this would be our degree 4 Taylor polynomial. Let's go and look at this one graphically as well. We have our original function in red, and we have our degree 4 Taylor polynomial in blue. So notice that as long as x is close to positive 1, the blue polynomial is a good approximation of the original function in red. Okay, I hope you found this video helpful. Thank you for watching.